I want to spend now just a few moments talking about the deep circulation. And more in talking about the deep circulation, we're simply identifying different water masses, different types of water with characteristic temperatures and salinities, than we are talking about movements and motions of water as we were talking with the surface circulation. But that's largely because our ability to study the deep circulation and our knowledge of the deep circulation is really limited by the fact that it's so hard to tell which way currents are moving a mile, two miles, three miles, seven miles deep in the ocean. And so our current measurements, our even ability to measure currents, currents in these depths of the ocean is extremely limited. So it's really relying upon motions and where we find particular water masses, water masses that help us piece together some understanding of what's happening in the deep circulation. But even so, even with just identifying where we find certain kinds of water, we've learned a lot about the deep circulation and we're going to talk about that right now. If we think of the surface circulation as a kind of speedy hare, well then the deep circulation is like that slow and purposeful tortoise in that fable, the tortoise and the hare. Of course the tortoise is slow moving and gets to its destination first, then the hare that runs and gets tired and runs and gets tired. The purpose of this example mostly though is to ex stress the differences between that sort of rapid wind driven surface circulation and the very slow unfolding of the deep circulation. It turns out that the deep circulation of the ocean really may control Earth's climate on scales of centuries to millennia perhaps to, um, and maybe even longer term scales. It's that deep, slow, sluggish circulation that's responsible for the distribution, the slow distribution of heat on our planet. And so even though it's one of the hardest places to study in the world, it's also maybe perhaps one of the most important places to study in the world ocean, particularly in terms of what's happening with climate change. The deep circulation, as it says in the book, to describe the book in here, really is the most voluminous of the entire ocean circulation. It starts at about a kilometer deep and goes down to the bottom of the ocean. It really makes up most of the ocean, the circulation of the ocean. So the wind-driven surface circulation just happening at the surface, but by far the more important, or let's just say by in just in volume, the more important circulation is the deep circulation of the ocean. Deep water masses, in other words, water masses of a characteristic salinity and temperature, and we'll define that in just a few minutes, they may be 600 to 1,000, perhaps even many years older than that. So water exists with characteristic properties, same temperature or very similar temperature, same salinity, perhaps very similar salinity. That mass of water may reside in the ocean for periods from 600 to 1,000 years. And that's phenomenal to think about something lasting that long, especially when we normally think of water as something that gets mixed up really easily. But when that water forms and gets into the deep circulation pipeline, it may stay there for 600 to 1,000 years or so. And generally, we think about that time scale of about 1,000 years or so as how long it takes the deep circulation to overturn. So once we get water into the pipeline, it takes it about a thousand years to wend its way through all the ocean basins before its properties disappear or before it's mixed back up into the surface circulation. We generally think of water masses then in that term time as their, the age of water masses as the time that's passed since their formation and their return to the surface.